my God, is that you, Anya's Vivarelli? I can see you through my little peephole here. It's that's right. It's Anya's <laughs> Vivarelli and Dan Radio Style here once again. Got another great uh, topic that we wanted to talk about, but kind of first, just real quick, Anya's man, how are you doing? It's awesome to see you again. What's going on? Yeah, good, 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 good to see yeah. you. I'm in Sydney. I'm um, yeah, just enjoying. The other Going city, Sydney, yeah, London. By the way, yeah. by the way man, I'm just going to brag a little bit for her because this is, again, a lot of people talk about manifesting money. I'm going to manifest yeah. money to pay for things. Anya's manifested a, a, a place to stay uh, yeah. that he doesn't have to pay for. So yeah. that's like the equivalent <laughs> of manifesting $200 a day. Just to everybody yeah. out there, it doesn't have to be money. Sometimes yeah. you just need a place to stay and free is pretty yeah. darn good price. Sometimes it's hard to negotiate a lower price than free. That's true. That's Sometimes. true. Yeah. The same when you got school. So we were going to talk about an awesome Neville Goddard book. By the way, just for those that don't have it, I've got the reader, the complete reader. Mm -hmm. Anya's actually has like uh, like every single individual book ever written by <laughs> Neville Goddard or thought about, or if he talked at one point and someone wrote it down on toilet paper, she's got that <laughs> copy. But for the rest of us, yeah, the complete reader is really rad. But anyway, yep. she was going to talk about awakened imagination. Mm. So let's mm. like, I know really very little about this. So let's, what's, what's going on with this one? Yeah. Talk to me. I love Neville. Yeah. Let's this do is, this. Yeah, me too. I, I just picked this up again because I was um, obviously around my books and uh, there was such good bits in here. So we're going to start. What we'll do is we'll read a little bit and then you can comment and then we'll just uh -huh. give our little thoughts because it's, yeah, there's lots of good little quotes. So let's start with this. Not realizing, we're talking about man, not realizing that all that he encounters is part of himself. He rebels at the thought that he has chosen the conditions of his life, that they are related by affinity to his own mental activity. Man must firmly come to believe that reality lies within him and not without or on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the big phrase came in from like a lot of us old hippie people is the as within, so without that whole yep. concept. And that's really echoed in my opinion in that very same line right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. yeah, I mean, just uh, right off the bat, it's probably a great place because I already interrupted. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Keep that's going. The, the spaces find themselves sometimes. But uh, no, the whole idea is that we so much, and I think a lot of us, I don't think I'm the only one, but we exist in our heads in a large extent, really. I mean, if you think about how many times you're like, oh my God, I should have turned left, or did I turn the curling iron off, right? All the crazy yeah. things that might go into our heads every day, we're thinking about all this stuff, and that is where like creation comes from. And yeah. what Goddard was really cool talking about, because he did, he started so early, at least in my opinion, what, the 50s or whatever it was, is he was getting on the train of, paying attention to our own thoughts, just trying to listen yeah. to that internal dialogue and mm. steer it in a better direction sometimes. And so yeah. I really feel like right off the bat, he's starting real strong with that mm. piece yeah. of manifesting. Yep. God, I mean, it's the brilliance of Goddard, I think, is that whole, like, own your thoughts, own your imagery, own it, what you're doing, and yeah. then realize everything's groovy. So yeah, I, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's that thing of shifting from life's just happening to me to I'm actually projecting assuming and then attracting and that is what i'm getting around me as a 3d experience so when you read neville you start to understand more and more and more that life isn't happening just independently of you it's happening because of what you're doing here's a perfect here. analogy that just hit me you've got to love this this is <laughs> so imagine a boat right in a boat and you're up in the captain's quarters right and there's two of the steering wheels right and yeah. you You've got source, we'll just call it source for whatever, is that one steering wheel with his hands on the wheel. Yeah. And you, you're the other one on the hands on the wheel. And it seems like whenever the wheels turn, both of them, you know, mimic each other, right? But a lot of us, it's the difference between going from source is actually doing the one that's driving, which source never really is. That's the problem. Uh, versus us finally realizing, no, it's the wheel we've got our hands on that's yep. actually steering the boat. Yep. Source is just giving us what we put in what exactly. our inputs are sources yeah. mimicking and giving us yeah. so it's funny as it's the difference between thinking life like you said life is happening to you versus no you're happening to it like it's yeah you're, you're telling life what i want to experience exactly and yeah and i want to bring up this point because i keep getting <laughs> emails about people saying oh this youtuber said there's no free will this youtube said that and i and i want to be 
Yeah, clear someone's about... still saying that some of that. I want to, yeah, yeah let's, let's hit that okay. real quick. Now, if I had no free will, when I walk out of this gate here from this house, I would be on automatic pilot going in a certain direction. No, I choose whether I go left or right. So I have got free will. Well, but, I think too, go ahead. But the free will is there, but we are driven by and make decisions from two things. One, our childhood programming. Yeah. Two, sure. our present assumptions. The assumptions mm -hmm. of what we think and what we assume to be true, that's that what, what we get. Two sometimes. Yeah. 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 So this whole notion that there's no free will, I now, don't agree thing, with. I don't no, I don't either. I'm, and I'm yeah. 100% agreeance with you. I, I just wanted to expand on one small part yeah. of this, which is you were talking about, um, I'd just be on autopilot. And I will say that, I would say for people that truly are on autopilot most of their lives and people that really aren't getting into law of attraction, yeah. obviously are more autopilot than those of us that are, are doing law of attraction. Cause yes, we're exactly but right. For people that are like 95% autopilot. Yeah. I guess their free will is limited greatly because they don't choose to partake in it, but they're reacting but, through right. childhood and they've got the, the, the filter of what's happened in the past, what's happened in the past. So they make all their assumptions and their yep. decisions like based on yep. that. I, yeah. This is what I did yesterday. This so, is what I must do today. You know, it's like, oh, very yeah. good, robot man. All right, well done. Yeah. Right, hopefully, you can do the, you know, the little dances that go with the robot too. But, yeah, and yeah. let's take it a step further because sure. people yeah. keep emailing me about. There's some YouTubers saying, oh, you know, that if you're looking at everyone's you pushed out, that people are just stuffed animals and they just do whatever you project onto them. Well, people aren't stuffed animals. They're people. And Unless they're kind of pudgy. They, they, if you <laughs> if you poke them. <laughs> they feel like it a little. I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, but yeah, you're right. People aren't stuffed animals. Yeah. What they are is they are showing up in front of you in how you uphold them. But they still, yes, are you pushed out in how they show up with you. So if you assume certain things about them, if you assume certain things about relationships and you assume certain things about if they're a man, men or women, women, they're going to give you that version of them how they show up in front of you. But people often say to me, Dan, well, that person had a really bad childhood and they're still dragging that into their relationship. Yeah, so how's yeah. that me pushed out? Cause that happened right. before I showed up. Yes. Right. But why are you there right now with them around them and they're in your life? Because that's the you, thing. Yeah. That's the key point that people don't get is it's not so much that they're being a certain way and you're just happening to be there. It's like you attracted and he attracted or she, she, whatever. This situation was attracted because of the energy that we were basically being or the, what we were, I mean, it's the yeah. us pushed out. It's the, what we were law of projection first, what you were talking about. It's what we're yeah. sending out. That's what I think of as energy, I guess, is like the energy we shoot out and it bounces yes. back. But and it bounces it, back. Yeah. Yes. And that's the projection part. Like I feel like so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're attracting certain situations and you may not be able to change that person. You may change yourself and go, I deserve better. And then now all of a sudden what you're projecting out actually attracts a different person in response now, instead of someone that maybe treats you poorly or doesn't love you. And by the way, yeah. this, you and I, I think it was our last video. We did like an hour on law of attraction. So I figured it's a good yep. place to remind people that we've linked that below because that was yeah. a really fun show that we did. And it was one of those because I get a lot of emails and I think law, um, it's us pushed out. It's kind of thrown around in a very yes. teddy bear-esque manner. And it's <laughs> deeper than that. <laughs> teddy bear-esque. Right? Where everyone's that. a teddy bear, but they kind of do, right? Like everybody is like, well, everybody just does what they're just, you pushed out. And it's like, um, yeah. like not quite. Like you need to understand that concept better. The concept more like, deeply. Yeah. yeah. And you and I, we did an hour on it. And I frankly think we covered it from a lot of really, really awesome angles. So anyway, yeah, yeah. The, I agree with you. The us pushed out thing um, is, is used and abused in ways that. Yeah. It's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. But let's, let's yeah. look at this a little more realistically. Not so, yes. uh, you know, one little six second title of a video. Right. Yeah. I mean, title, people are people and the versions of them, you can bring out the best in them and you can bring out the worst in them. But we got to remember people aren't stuffed animals or robots. They're people. Yep. They have their own thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, loves, hates, 
they're people and using the law of attraction and everyone's you pushed out to think of them as just robots that, that come and do whatever yeah. you want is not based on love. It's based on you trying to get, if that's how you're yeah. thinking about everyone's you pushed out. And, and if you're thinking about people as how can I get them to do everything I want, yeah. you're still not someone that understands how to have a good relationship. I, I agree completely. And, and one, I guess one way I like to look at it is I feel like, you know, I feel like we're all just moths flying around at night. And every once in a while, you end up on a front porch with a porch light <laughs> with some of the most amazing other moths that you ever, ever thought you would see. I love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I, I've, I've said it a few times. Yeah, I love it. I just, love I mean, that's it. what. It's like you bump into people sometimes and you're like, oh my God, I've like waited to meet you my whole life. Like it's just, yeah. um, it's really, really awesome when it happens. So that, look, that is the poetic part of the day. What you just said there. That's, nice, that's nice. just stunning. Where's oh. my, where's my flock of moths? That just right. Went. I need a big, I saw the biggest <laughs> one I lived in Tennessee. It's probably like the one, well, you've probably got like killer moths that actually fly oh. away with kangaroos and stuff. And they're not even big pterodactyl ones. Probably <laughs> only one type of moth that literally bites human beings. And it's probably Australian. It's probably yeah. the, yeah. the wolf gang yeah. vampire moth. Yeah. Moth eater. I don't know what they're anyway. Exactly. That's, exactly. I, lo I love when you go there because the place scares me. It's awesome. Yeah. So, okay. Awaken imagination. So, we, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Let's or did, you know, I, I don't know. Cause we could side salad some more. We, we are going to cover the best. We're going to cover some. Best. Yeah. I, I love this you book. Never know there's so you much yeah. good stuff. So another thing, our imagination connects us with the state desired, but we must use imagination masterfully, not as an overlooker thinking of the end, but as a partaker thinking from the end. We must actually be there in imagination. If we do this, our subjective experience will be realized. So the whole of and from one of Neville's biggest concepts that he talks about again and again and again and again, which is about being in the state of what you want. So, you know, we, I was talking to someone this morning um, in a coaching session. We were discussing how so many people have three things that they're in lack of, lack of time, lack of money, lack of love. Now, when you're in any one of those things, you are not able to bring in more money, more time, more love because right. you're in the state that is, that is a photocopy, a match, a magnet to not getting any of those things. You're like the antithesis of it. Yeah, exactly. So it's hard to feel that way when, yeah. because you're getting what you feel. That's, so that, that, that's the part that's hard for people to like, but, but how do you feel it? Right. But you don't feel that way. And that's why you're attracting what you're complaining mm. about right now. That's what I keep. I love when people say, but right now things suck. And it's like, I know that's why you're doing law of attraction, huh? Because otherwise yeah. you would already have it and you wouldn't be trying to make it. So that's yeah. what's fun about this whole law of attraction thing. So yeah. You're 100 percent And right. Going back to what we were talking about before, if you're seeing the, that you can make people do things through using yeah. everyone as you pushed out. You're like puppet strings, right? The puppet string theory, instead of ask yourself, do I really want someone that just does everything I want or do I want someone who is free to love me? Now, if you want someone who um, begs you, for attention personally i hear that a lot about get someone to beg for you get someone to yeah. commit to you yeah and yeah. the whole word to worship me to, to love yeah. me the way i love yeah. them and all these yeah whereas, and whereas really dan that's saying i'm too lazy to love myself and do it for myself so i'm going to try and get it from you yeah. now if that's the kind of relationship you want be my guest but if you want a mature loving and meaningful relationship I can tell you if someone begged me, I would find that so repulsive because I think you got no self-love. I don't want to be with you. I wouldn't no, want I, someone begging at me like a dog. I don't I know, want I just, that. But when I, was, when I was begging earlier to, to go out with you, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I mean, I, I, I can change. No, right Actually, now, I, I did, to talk about this on you. I, I did I'm kidding, my, of course we did. I did my um, how to how I attracted my specific person video, yeah. and somebody thought you were my specific person. I said, <laughs> I, I've had a lot of people say you guys are so cute together. You should be together. I, I'm like, I can think of at least two people that would be really unhappy if I, that happened. I know exactly, but I said, look, 
Dan is very special to me. He's my organic nutty twin and yes, that I, I cannot replace. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're like my sister of another mister. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, there's a, there's a weird kinship. It was funny how we met. We've yeah. talked about that before. It was, it was actually, how, I was kind of I ripping love, on you a little bit. I was sort of being I love a love how we met. I yeah. love how we met. And it it's, just it's makes pretty it funny. way more it's, interesting. We've got to be getting close to three years. I would say January yeah. is probably three years for us. Cause I want to say it was close to the start of the year that we started recording, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been a little while. It's fun. It's yeah. yeah you and I, you and I, I, lo I love doing videos with you and yeah. uh, I think Me we're trying too. to do, we're trying to do them every couple of weeks now for those of you that enjoy your on yes and Dan time. So we're, uh, we're trying to yeah. find reasons to get together more often. To get but, yeah. more often. Yeah. I, um, and really, and really people need to know, Dan, we just do this to amuse ourselves. No, that's <laughs> it. I mean, I'll be honest. There's a lot of times I just talk to myself like this with the camera off. I, you guys you <laughs> don't even, sometimes I choose to record it. Sometimes I don't, I don't know. That's oh all I can say. God, sometimes it's actually to somebody. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Yeah, everyone so, asks about the okay. picture I have. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I just talk to it. Like, hi. Hi, I wizard guy. Wizard guy, yeah. Wizard guy. <laughs> so, yes, so, going back going back to the side saddle, as yeah, my friend yeah. says, because she was trying to say <laughs> side salad, and she got mixed up, and she said salad, side saddle. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much the same so, thing. That's another way to look at it. Side saddle for this one. Yes, yes. If you really want a meaningful, loving, mature relationship, you've got to be someone who understands that it's not about getting people to do stuff for you. It's about you really feeling loved and wanted and secure and offering that in a genuinely dignified and beautiful way to another human being. I, and I, I completely agree. I know I'm speaking to the, the fact that you, you know, and I know that we have a myriad of people that will communicate with us. And to your point, there's a lot yep. of people that are, uh, asking for people like they like you were saying that like worship them or like have yeah. some sort of weird off balance thing now there are times that we will be allowed to manifest these things create these yes. things in our life so yeah. we understand why it, it sucks when you have someone that worships you that's yes. not cool when if you're wow. ever in that place and maybe you're wanting to be and you know that's great mm -hmm. i get it because it's one of those things that maybe either a you just don't kind of have the wisdom around it per se, mm. Uh, mm. or just maybe haven't experienced it or whatever, and and think it's something that it's not. And it's kind of like yeah. I want to say kind of like fame, but it kind of is. A lot of people are like I wish I was famous, and it's like mm. so. Imagine not being able to go anywhere without having yeah. people bother you anywhere. Yes. You can't go anywhere without having anymore. Like, yeah, ever again. Like you have to dress up in crazy costumes so you can walk in the mall. Like you're like, I used to go to the mall when I was young. I miss doing it. Right. Like, so yeah, yeah, it might be great. And you're like, Oh, that's a, that'd be a great problem to have maybe. But for a lot of people, that's where they're like, Oh man, it's like I sold my soul to the devil, you know? So it, yeah. it is one of those things where be careful what you ask for. Because yeah. again, to your point, sometimes you might not be asking for the most healthy thing. And maybe that's what you've manifested here. And you're like, I don't like it. And it's like, well, yeah, mm, mm. look at what you're kind of being. And that's what, that's what God really tries to get us to do is look inward. How are you mm. being? How mm. are you feeling? What is going on inside of you? That is yeah. what you are attracting or us yes. pushed out. Right. Yeah. It's that, it's that whole concept. Don't, don't look yeah. to blame the other person. A lot of people are like, will he, will he change? How do I change him? And it's like, you don't, it's you that has the problem. Yeah. Right? yeah. You attracted this or you are attracted to this. It's not like yeah. there are plenty of people in the world that are horrible people on the inside. And it's not that I'm a horrible person pushed out. No, Jeffrey Dahmer in our country is a horrible dude, regardless of me. But if I attracted Jeffrey Dahmer to my front door, I'm doing something wrong in my wrong. life, <laughs> right? So that's where it yeah. kind of comes into play. It's it's not yeah. it's not that there's Jeffrey Dahmer's that's out out there. It's that there's a Jeffrey Dahmer in here that's the yeah. problem. So yes. that's one thing to really really pay attention to. If, if I agree, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think he's totally beautifully speaking to it. In fact, this will tie into the the final part. We'll get there when we do. But yeah, it's this it's that feeling part. And I don't know if he goes into it even deeper here in this reading that you're doing right now, but that's a really key ingredient that it one is. to many people are like, how do I feel like that if I don't have it, mm. which is kind of what you're trying to talk about too. Mm. Uh, but the other side is, is you, you need to, you need to be kind of feeling that way. So uh, you do. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can't attract anything that you don't feel you are. See, this is the thing where I see a lot with with women that want to be, I want him to treat me like a princess. I want him to be, I want to be his queen. Now, when I hear those words, they're red flags for me. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because the queen is someone who gets given to and gives nothing in return. She sits on her throne and has people give to her. Is that the kind of relationship you want with another human being? The princess is pandered to as well. Um, and, and is in this fairy tale that the man does everything for her and cherishes her. I hear the word, I want him to cherish me. I want him to cherish me. You have to cherish yourself and be in that state to give that to him, that you cherish yourself, that you love yourself. That is the greatest gift you can give to them, not try and get that from them. Oh, it's so true. And by the way, from a guy's perspective, let me give an example. Please. To what happens. Yeah, from yes. what happens in these situations. Because that's actually been me uh, on more than one occasion. Not a lot, but uh, it's a lesson I've learned very painfully. Yeah. But what happens is, is you get into a relationship with someone, they love who you are as a person, right? Yeah. Then it gets to that place where they do kind of want that to be worshipped a little more. And you as a man, try really hard to sort of treat them as the queen to treat them as give them all this wonder and amazement and you start to live your life for them and then what starts to happen is you start to lose respect for the guy that you once cared about because now he doesn't really he's not really the man that you fell in love with now he's this guy that's subservient to you and that's not that same strong kind of man or yes whatever it was that you were attracted to that Mm. was unique about him he's given that up so he could give you this queen experience yeah You end up not liking it, ruining a relationship, and in some cases, kind of screwing with the poor dude and getting him a little messed up. That's his fault. It's his path. He chose this, and that's a whole another story. But then you, when he stops or he or he he falters or changes his mind and finally says, "I'm done doing this," right? And then all of a sudden, it's like, "Oh gosh, oh my god!" Why isn't he doing this for me anymore? And it's like your entitlement kicks in. I'm entitled. You were doing that for me before. Why are you not? You're my little slave. You must make me feel good. What am I? How am I going to feel good if you're not juggling in front of me? What what, what, do they, what do they call the the guy the the juggler court with jester? the courage? yeah the court jester yeah court jester you did it sounds Australian much cooler when very you well. say it. when you say it it sounds so cool because that's like that's where they all were it was out there in the <laughs> the queen's land with the jester <laughs> well I'm not a jester well you should be a jester you should you got you do the Australian accent quite well thank you why well, I try I yeah, practice I'm you'll be you you'll be fine when you get here you'll be fine today mate get <laughs> <laughs> mate. It. G'day. No worries. Yeah, literally, I saw him wrote it one time. I'm like, no, it's literally G apostrophe day. And I was like, wow, no, it's g'day. There's no, there's no extra letters in there. Well, let's not waste time. Yeah. yeah that's what I love funny. about you Australians, it's not like the English where you guys have all these extra letters and you pronounce all of them and all this crazy stuff. But like in Australia, they're like, no, we're getting rid of all those letters. No, <laughs> they're expensive. Can't afford them. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it was, it was a prison them. colony, you know, originally. Like, right, so right, they didn't have a bunch yep. of stuff. My letters, yeah. they, had to get, they had to throw them away. Get, them, get rid of them. Convict, oh. convict. Convict, the land of convicts. Yeah. The land anyway. of convicts. Okay, there's something else I want to read you too. Oh, okay. here, this was, this was good because I put two stars next to it, so it must be really, really good. Dude, it's double good. Damn. <laughs> double star, people. <laughs> double makes, star. Wait, wait for anyone that's driving right now while you're listening to this, pull over. It's about to get crazy. We got two stars, Here people. we go. Two here stars. We go. Watch out. Okay. What, whenever the actions of the inner body match the actions which the outer must take to appease desire, that desire will be realized. Construct mentally a drama which implies that your desire is realized and make it one which involves movement of the self. Mm. Immobilize your outer physical self. Act precisely as though you were going to take a nap. Start the predetermined action in imagination a vivid representation of the action is the beginning of that action. Then as you fall asleep, consciously imagine yourself into the scene. The length of the sleep is not important. A short nap is sufficient, but carry carrying the action into sleep thickens fancy into fact. I love that. So one, <gasps> one thing that really jumps out at me right off the bat that I don't want to lose is. Yep. The idea of our imagery when we do it, what it sounds like he's suggesting, and I, at least it, it, it's amazing, it, it should be what he's suggesting because it, it's so powerful in doing it, is moving within your world yep. 
that you're creating. It's actually not just viewing yourself from afar. It's not just yeah. necessarily viewing it right in front of you, but it's actually you, you know, if it's, if it's your first dance with your husband, for example, then imagine the different people you'd see as you guys are slowly doing turns, yes. right? It's like you want to see all the faces that are looking in at you. That's where you're moving relative to your yep. imagery and you're giving it so much more depth and, and reality uh, and exactly. power. So yeah, that's, like that's he, what I'm like hearing. Like he says, Dan, it's, you've got to make the um, imaginal scene involve movement of the self. So you're not yeah. sitting, you're not stagnant. And you're relative you are literally to it. moving around 3D as if you would in your, yeah. really, in your real life. So you've got, this is a real nice little nugget from Neville, create imaginal scenes where there's movement of you. Right. Yeah. Now, this, this brings up the thing. So this was the analogy that I was telling you I was going to sneak up on us. And I was planning yep. on doing it in the other place, but this is the appropriate right now. So I think, the one, we just got the bitch and Neville Nugget for the moving <laughs> relative to it. I'm using your words. I'm yeah. stealing yeah. Uh, yeah, We're borrowing good. onions as Neville Nuggets right now. It's a, <laughs> it is. I just get to be a part of it. That's all. I'm lucky. But, yep. right, so you, you want to physically move your body within 3D space in your yep. mind relative to this. But on top of that, a lot of people talk about the feeling of it, right? And here's the mm. thing. Imagine if you had a magic lamp, right? Like, I don't know if people have the old Arab, you know, the thing like Aladdin and stuff where they have the little, you know, you rub the lamp and a genie pops out and you get three wishes or whatever the hell. Imagine if you could rub a lamp and you'd say, all right, this is, this is the wish I would like to have fulfilled. And imagine you knew that that worked, right? Maybe you knew you only had three of them, but imagine that all you had to do was make that wish from the genie's lamp or the lamp and the genie and the lamp, yep. and you would get your wish. That's how you would have to feel. Like if you knew it worked like that and you knew, yep. you wouldn't yep. question it. It's like, yep. I know that if I take a little bag of microwave popcorn and I put it in the microwave for three, <laughs> three minutes and 15 seconds, I'm sorry, let me go metric, three minutes and 15 seconds. There you go. That was pretty fun. And I pop it in there and I turn it on. I know for sure that I'm going to have popcorn and I'm going to open it up and I know what that feels like, but like, I don't have to question it. Right. I don't have to understand the mm. mechanics of it. I don't have none of that, but it's that knowing it's that knowing. So what does that feel like? Yeah. What does it feel like to know I could have a popcorn? Well, I know if certain mm. actions that I do, uh, I know they create an outcome yeah. and it's that knowing it's that confidence that I think that's where that feeling comes from is I'm doing this. I'm imagining it. I'm seeing it. This is happening. Yeah. done end of story and it's that it's that and that's the part it's still hard i get it and you know practice doing it a bunch yes uh, over time yes. i mean there's a lot of ways that we strengthen that but ultimately it is that confidence and the more confident you are eh, generally speaking the quicker your manifestations occur yep so i think For that sure. coupled with that moving 3d it's just that knowing mm. it's happening yeah you're unstoppable so, recapping yes. you hop into imagination you you basically do a few things in sequence. Firstly, you got to make sure you look out your own eyes. You're yes, in the scene. Yes, yes, it's from your vantage point. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Secondly, you've got to involve movement of the self within the scene. Nice. Thirdly, you inject the feeling which you're talking about. If you can activate those three things within an imaginal scene and then drop into a nap or a short sleep, you've basically mastered what Neville is talking about. Do you ever hear that, that song they have here in the States? Or at least I learned as a kid called the Hokey Pokey. You put your yes. left foot in, you put your left foot in. Same thing, right? You, you kind of dip yourself into the, uh, the imagination, the whole, you dip yourself into the law of attraction <laughs> world. And uh, it's yes. uh, before you know it, you're doing the law of attraction pokey. That's all I'm saying. Law of attraction pokey. Yeah, like nice. the Hokey Pokey, but it's a different kind of pokey. It's, uh, yeah. For those of you that like that, uh, what is it, that salmon with that Hawaiian <laughs> yummy sauce, pokey, P-O-K-E, that's good yeah. pokey. That's a good nice. Thing. Anyway, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you got some good side, side saddles side today. Sa saddle, side saddle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we call me saddlebags. What's going on, Anya? That's what are you saddle saying? Bags. A fat? Mm -hmm. Stop it. That's just cruel. I'm sensitive right now. Stop it, people. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. Well, yeah. So we were. Um, this kind of ties in too, though, to to a very famous Neville story that yep. I thought uh, was kind of interesting, and, and we'd sort of chit chatted about a little bit. But I believe his name was Eo Locker, um, a e. gentleman Locker. that. Uh, something dance studio or something like that. I think it was Arthur, but Arthur yep. Murray dance studio. Yep. And he was, was like out at like a promise. Nevada section of it or some Reno section yep. or whatever. And yep. Anyway, it was an amazing story. I guess how he 
was trying to prove to a friend, and you can correct me where I'm wrong here, but he was trying to prove to a friend that this law of attraction stuff work. And this friend was very adamant that this, all this is just all this positive thinking hokey, hokey pokey is just a bunch, bunch of crud, bunch of yeah. stuff and shinola as they would say, even though I didn't use the proper word that they would say in the <laughs> state here. But um, so he basically says, all right, here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to manifest. If I manifest something that's impossible, will you believe it? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah you know, I'll, I'll buy into that. What the hell? So he goes, all right, here's, here's the thing. I'm going to be, I'm going to get the Arthur Murray dance studio to pay for a convention for the Reno, for the Reno chapter or whatever the hell they were. I don't know exactly. Yep. And I guess the guy's like, all right, whatever. And so the guy, this, this, this EO locker guy, I guess built his business up to like 800% profit or some crazy number like that. And yeah, believe it or not, the Arthur Murray dance studio threw a convention for him and he was sitting up yeah. on stage next to uh, the Arthur Murray. And that's exactly what he supposedly imagined when he was yeah. kind of going through the whole process of what he yeah was doing to imagine it and looking at the crowd and the lights flashing and just it's a very surreal experience um, when you've been on stage at all yeah to imagine being on stage in front of thousands to millions is is just a it's kind of an awe-inspiring mm. thing but anyway that the power of that uh was pretty cool and then his friend at the end of it all still seemed to kind of poo-poo it a little bit but he's like yeah well you know what you're not using all that fancy positive stuff and the guy's yeah. like yeah and Dan, you and I will put the link down below for that particular yeah. YouTube. We want to give you a bit of a heads up. The guy does swear his head off. Oh, yeah. And he dropped a couple of F-bombs. Yeah. Love and that. he also has um, a, bit of a, oh. pen, a bit of a penchant for the women as well at the end. <laughs> oh, the penchant. Wow. Yes. Well, then. A bit then. of a penchant. I don't a know what a penchant towards. is, but it's said it with the French, and it could be like in nastiness, and it sounds in French so beautiful when they say <laughs> It's like, oh, that's sounds beautiful. Yes, when you in, in, in French, it's a bit of a penchant for the women. Penchant. And in, in English, Australian, US, he's a bit of a sex addict. <laughs> hey, man. Bam. Yeah, he's like in a, he's in one of those, what, 12-step programs or whatever for <laughs> sex, I'm sure. Like, he's up, such man? a character. He's a real character. So for those that haven't yeah, seen he's, it, And he's an be... older guy, too, at the time. It's pretty cool. I, I would assume he's probably not still with us. Uh, I, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, because that, that YouTube Because he met Neville, didn't he? He did. He, yeah. yeah. He like and he's got person. that signed book of Neville well, in that video. He shows you a signed copy of the law and the promise signed by Neville. Right. So, yeah. And, and yeah. Neville, well, he passed yeah. away when? Do you remember? You know. Neville. Neville, yeah. Uh, I think it was 73, if I remember correctly. How old was he? I, I know I could Ooh. look all this stuff up, but where's the fun in that, right? When I could yeah. <laughs> Encyclopedia uh, uh, Viverellia. What? Yeah, he was, whoo, he was at least 70 something. Okay, you see yeah, the yeah. photos of him and he's, a, he's yeah. an older man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like all the stuff I've seen of him, he wasn't exactly young and, sp well, there's some of the pictures. Yeah, you're right. He's got, he's, he was doing that stuff for many, many years. Anyway, he I, was. he's he was. amazing he man. Was. Amazing man. Yeah. And it is cool. Some of those, uh, the old recordings where you actually get to hear yeah. him talk. What's funny is his written word, even when read by him, makes more sense for some reason. Yes. Like he understands where his odd pauses belong. And, most of us yeah. just read it and we're like, I just, I have to take a breath. I, yeah. I can't keep saying the sentence without actually taking a breath in a place that I probably should still yeah. read. Right. Like, yeah. So it is a uh, beautiful, but yeah, the, the story was fantastic. So yeah. EO locker for those of you that haven't checked EO it locker. out. Um, yeah. Pretty solid proof. I mean, again, I, I, as I've said many a time, it's to me, it's something that you prove to yourself. You could never mm truly prove it to another and even in this yeah. case you could look at it and yeah. Be like, yeah well you just did all the right things that's kind of what his friend said you know you can exactly you right things you shook the yeah. right hands blah 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 and it's like mm. okay i mean the pe and point of the can matter believe is, that. Yeah, but well that's and here's fine. the thing yeah. but but what happens it seems anyways is as you do some of these techniques you're actually the one that's attracting the right hands that you're shaking and those doors that are opening and you're attracting those people into your life to help the sales yeah. go up 800%. So they're yeah. still, in my opinion, directly correlated. And it's, I, I agree with you. I don't think there is coincidence. I think there's vibrational. Even people. Photocopies. Know, yeah. yeah of what you, what kachink, by the way. Kachink. And that goes way back to one of our, our very first show. Kachink, kachink. Do you remember that? Kachink, kachink. I love that. Your, that's your copy <laughs> noise. Your kachink, kachink is the best. Yeah, the photocopy, the universal mm -hmm. big photocopy. Yeah. Big photocopy. That's all it does. It just takes a little copy, a little snapshot of you, and it sends you on your way with a, with a wonderful little copy. Ow. Oh. Oh, what's oh, oh, something in Australia? 
probably it's, it's, it's probably biomy. deadly. I'm sure it's deadly. Whatever it is, <laughs> that's why I look with. Uh, it could be a slight, sliver, but it's probably fear. got some sort of Aboriginal poison on the tip or something crazy. <laughs> Even gonna kill you. It's a crazy oh, place. Bloody Australia. You wear white so you can tell when there's blood, right? That's why you exactly. do it. Sure it's just oh, there's a red yeah. spot. Oh no, something got me. <laughs> something Damn it. got me. Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't know. I'm just so used to getting <laughs> eaten by critters. So anyway, yeah. anyway, well, Anya, I think we covered some really amazing stuff. Yeah. No, that was good. It was a good. Um, I love nutting out the mechanics of things of how, you know, and everybody's got their own right to see Neville yeah. and interpret Neville the way they want. Oh, this is gosh. yours and my take. This is how we yeah. think. This is how we, you know, and I think too, I mean, for me, you know, even reading Neville for 30 plus years, I'm just starting to really understand the deeper levels of what he's talking about and being able to apply it now. So it's not about being an expert because I certainly don't feel like one. I feel like I'm going to be a student of Neville for the rest of my life because I'm testing it out against myself. I'm playing a game of life as Florence Scovel Shin says, but I'm playing against myself to see yeah. these teachings. Are they able to come to life? Can I breathe life into this to create a result to show myself that it's possible? So that's really say, what the game is. You're playing I'll against say yourself. There's probably all the time. probably three books. Yeah. That I can think of off the top of my head that uh, I have reread a number of times in my life, yep. and and it's usually over you know a number of years, and then I'll read it again. And every time it's like you've said, it's um it's reading it through new eyes, and it's a new yeah. understanding of it. That it's some some things are so deep that you know yeah. the, the, the use an unfortunately overused analogy, but it's kind of like layers of an onion, and yes. You know, so many layers uh, mm. that we're all trying to kind of unravel and certainly within our own lives too, because yeah. then there comes back to that self-reflection like, okay, well, I understand this uh, intellectually. Like I understand what's going on. And then it's like, all right, now I got to mm. actually look at my life. I've got to yeah. put down my filters. I've got to stop making excuses because a yeah. lot of us do that. Right. And like it's yeah. that, it's like that really, you kind of got to take ownership of you. Mm. And, and, you know, and you know what, Dan, that brings, that, right? This God. brings me to some people keep sending me YouTubes of other law of attraction people and saying, what do you think about this? Now I'm not going to mention any names because I'm not, but I will say this. If someone is talking about manifesting money and abundance, but they're doing all their videos from their car, you've got to question whether they know what they're talking about because they obviously you think, why are they always doing videos in their car? If they're talking about making millions of dollars and how the quantum physics works and about all this stuff. Look right. at what people are, not just what people are saying to you, look at what they're doing. Because just because somebody says something on YouTube doesn't mean that they understand it more than just a theory. Okay. Sure. You've got to understand that the people you're listening to are actually putting it into practice and not talking it out of that part of their body. It, there's a, there's an adage here. That's, it's a uh, somewhat rude, I guess. It's not rude and crass and language wise, but just the concept of it. But there's the, for those who can do, yeah. for those who can't teach. Teach. Now, oddly, yeah, uh, it's, there are against certain what we're talking of, about. Yeah. And sometimes you'll find people that actually have demonstrated that they can do it. And then yeah. they, you're lucky, hopefully, that they're teaching you too. Now, that's yeah. when you've really found someone that's a wonderful teacher, in my opinion. And that's yes. usually what I look for in someone is like, can you demonstrate what you're exactly. talking about? Exactly. You and know, and I think much better place. that's why... I had a conversation with my partner last week and, you know, and he said to me, if you're going to have any credibility talking about a specific person, you need to share a bit of your story. Now I wasn't sharing my story, not because I didn't want to tell it, but because I wanted to maintain his anonymity and his privacy. Right. Right. So we got together, we discussed what I would share, what I wouldn't share. So if I'm going to be talking about manifesting a specific person, they do have a right to know the people watching that I have actually manifested it yeah. and I can share it from a reasonable place. So it is about watching. Okay. We are, it's, you know, you don't want to be doing what a lot of, and I will use the word, you know, some spiritual centers, some religious people, some, you know, don't do as I do, do as I say, yeah. you have to know that if you're going to watch Dan or me or anybody else on YouTube, or you're going to go to any coach, that they're not just trying to sell you a package for their own get financial gain, that they are actually talking to you from a place of understanding, experiencing the mechanics, the foundational emotions and mental state needed to create that thing that you want. Right. 
Yeah. And that's true. And it's, it really is. I mean, and I, and I agree for, for a lot of people, sometimes it's good just to have someone kind of listen to you from the outside, because again, we, we get in echo yeah. chambers sometimes, or we put ourselves in echo chambers, even sometimes where we hear what we want to hear, or we hear, yeah. like we only see all the right things we're doing. We don't actually notice that, you know, every other sentence I'm saying something bad about myself in my head, like, God, I wish I wasn't yeah. fat. You know, you're yes. like, but everything's really yes. good. And I love sunshine and all oh, the flowers are beautiful. It makes me look fat, but look at over here too. Everything's great. But we have that nagging thing that we ignore, but it's yeah. the thing that we got to stop ignoring <laughs> and embrace it. And really like, like I keep saying, it's like when, when these little moments of contrast pop up or these little moments uh, of, of ugly show themselves, like embrace yeah. it, hug it. Don't run away from it. Don't freak out. It's okay. It's okay. It yeah. sucks. We all have our little things that need to be healed. But when you have the opportunity to heal it, yeah, feel it, heal it, give it, give it some love, and you'll be surprised at how many things start to open up in our lives mm. when we start to get rid of some of the junk. Or is a, there's a guy Jordan Peterson, a Canadian that's really famous right now. He talks yeah. about clean, keeping your room clean, like getting all the junk, the clutter removed from yeah. your life, and it's amazing how that does really seem to free our energy up. And, it uh, does, uh, it does, and that applies to the physical spaces mental spaces yeah clear out the the junk yeah well and they're tied together right the physical and the mental are tied together i mean what we're imagining is the mental part and that's what creates the physical everything comes from like i I keep telling people a a lot of my videos now is it's your thoughts today are your tomorrow like so what you're experiencing tomorrow or because of what you thought today Or, exactly. So, so that's the thing. If you don't like what you're happening, what's happening today, and so many people do this when they're manifesting, but but he's in a there's a third party and blah blah blah. I'm like, stop looking at your right now. If you keep looking at your right now, you're gonna yeah. create another version of that kachunk kachunk tomorrow. Kachunk kachunk. Hey, yeah. You get another day of him being in a third party relationship, or there's this I'm manifesting where we're together, and obviously he's not in a third party relationship because that's not okay, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So then keep focusing on that. Who gives a crap what's going on right now? I don't care. Right now yeah. is what you're trying to change. So focus on what you would like to experience. And hey, guess what? Maybe your tomorrow will be different than your today. Exactly. I might come to you for some coaching next week. Okay. Because that was brilliant. Thank well you. said. Thank you. You scared me. I'm like, <laughs> she's joking. Don't do that to me in front of people. <laughs> Awesome. we'll do it we'll do our next session will be a live coaching session <laughs> I, I still we're gonna figure it out too but i i still think one of these days you we should do a we should do a live With i think the, we'll just pick like yeah. your channel or something we'll just do it through your 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 web yeah. feed. but i think it'd be fun to do a live one and just take questions from yeah people. Actually, with both of us doing it too, it might be easier to field some of the yeah. questions while one person's talking and the other can be like ooh, ooh i found a good question yeah right? so and I think also that'd be a blast. you get the female and male perspective that you need Damn. two halves of a nut yeah, two halves of the nut makes a whole nut. And that's what's beautiful about this two organic nuts that we got going on here. Yeah. Anya, organic. thanks so much for another great show. And uh, you guys will probably be doing another one in a couple of weeks. Uh, we will. All that good stuff. So we'll talk to you all soon. Cool. Dan, ciao. hang on. We'll say goodbye in private. You got it. All right. Ciao. Uh, hang on. I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs>